Hi, my name is Christoph. I'm an engineer at Nextcloud, and I would like to talk about Nextcloud JavaScript APIs. So what is an API? API stands for Application Programming Interface. In Nextcloud terms, that is the interface a Nextcloud app uses to access the Nextcloud core or another app. If you are familiar with Nextcloud development, you will know that we have a curated and versioned public API for the back end. However, we have not had the equivalent of that on the front end until a few months ago. If we look at this example here, we see a very typical coding pattern that we used for the old JavaScript code. It's a script that is directly loaded into the browser and it accesses Nextcloud via a global variable. This variable is called OC. So here you see it uses oc.generateURL. This script only works if the global variable OC exists. So if your script is loaded too early, before the Nextcloud script are initialized, it won't work. If you load the script into a test browser, it won't work either. So what does this look like in the browser? Well, there are the global variables from Nextcloud, which are OC, OCP, OCA, and some dependencies like handlebars and jQuery. If our first app loads, it registers to oca.app1. If the second app loads, it registers to oca.app2. That's fine. But it also comes with its own version of jQuery. You see here, you get a conflict because Nextcloud uses jQuery2 and the app uses jQuery3. Similarly, if an app ships Lodash, there is a conflict with the underscore library Nextcloud ships. Instead of polluting the global scope, we can use a bundler like Webpack and possibly Babel to process our scripts and create an encapsulated bundle for each app as well as for Nextcloud core. This means no more global variables are exported and there shouldn't be any conflicts. So let's visualize this change. We still have a few global variables like OC, OCP and OCA and some global dependencies like handlebars and jQuery because some legacy scripts still require that. But we also have a bundle for core. It ships view, Nextcloud router, Lodash and other dependencies. But those dependencies aren't global, they are only used inside this core bundle. And the same applies to apps. App1 comes with view 3. So it's distinct to the version that core uses, but that's fine because they are conflict free and so app1 can use whatever version it wants. App2 also uses view 2.6 like core, but it's shipping its own version. It's totally independent. And you see, it's totally possible to use any other UI framework like ReactJS as long as it doesn't interfere with the globals. So for the new API of Nextcloud, we created npm packages. You can install these with npm-i and then import into your code and just use universally. They don't depend on anything global or Nextcloud being loaded, so you can also just use them in your test setup. You can discover the packages by browsing the npm package registry or looking into the Nextcloud dev manual. It has a list of all the packages with a short description and a link to the generated code documentation where you can find all the details. All right, this should sum up why and how we change the JavaScript APIs and how you can find more information. Thanks.